Hi, in this video I'd like to go through the process of converting a Weidmuller Ucreate web based controller into a UOS Codesys based controller, the UC20WL2000AC automation controller. The same basic principle applies to the gateways, the GTW and the 4G variant. Just for your information, the high-end Weidmuller controllers, which is the M3000 and M4000, shown at the bottom of this page, already come with UOS pre-installed, so there's no need to upgrade them. So there are a few steps involved in doing this. Um, we basically need to upgrade the web controller to a UOS controller, but then the version of UOS is already been superseded so once we've upgraded from the web controller to UOS operating system firmware we can then upgrade again to the very latest version of UOS so I'll show you that now by going onto the Weidmuller website so we can go onto Google and we can just type in Weidmuller support and follow this link support.vardmueller.com see the German spelling it's actually u-e-l-l-e-r.com click on there I've mentioned this in previous videos this site um, ideally you need to create an account on this site and we can just search for UC20 WL2000 AC firmware and we can use the filtering here so filter on firmware and we need to check down this list so you'll notice here the very latest firmware is UOS version 2.12 so I would suggest you download that so to download it click here you can download it uh, unfortunately we can't take the web controller directly to that version so we also need to download another file which is let me just find it upgrade firmware you create web to uos so we need to download this file so there's the file name so once that zip file is downloaded this is the file you'll have so i click into it just to show you what the files are so you've got some release notes and what are the supported modules and notice that it actually covers two controllers the AC the WL2000 AC and the WL AC CAN as in the CAN open master variant of the controller so what we need is this file which is the upgrade so that upgrades your version of the web controller to version 2.10 of UOS firmware okay so what you should do at this point is extract that file and put it onto your PC this is the file we're going to use sorry this one AC so we're going to take a WL2000 AC and we're going to upgrade the system to 2.1 of UOS so the next stage is to open up your web browser of your controller so let me just do that so you need to obviously apply 24 volt DC power to the controller during the upgrade process it's strongly recommended that you don't have any IO modules fitted you remove all of them so it's just the bare controller so once you're onto the website that's not the default IP so ignore that you should know your IP address you sign in and unless you've changed it the default is admin and debt mold capital D E T M O L D so what we're seeing here is the web controller so with this product the program is in function block diagram and just to show you my program I've totally cleared it out there's nothing here just to explain to you that if there was a program in here you may well want to back that up and you may also be using um, node red so if I go back to the home page you've got these various add-ons or apps so if you have a node red project you might want to back that up you might want to back up opc ua modbus tcp etc 
so I'm not going to go through that in this video I already have done videos covering those areas so just to take you back to my channel here I only did them a couple of weeks ago so there's you create how to do a web you create web how to do a manual backup and you create web controller factory reset and restore so if you want to back up your controller or restore it they're the two videos to refer to okay but at this point we're basically just going to go into this controller and wipe it and install UOS so if I go back to the home tab if I go to settings and go to firmware update you literally then drag the file in so I put that side by side and then drag that file so it's WL 2000 AC US drag that into here and you can see it's a 0.3 megabyte file now this could take approximately 30 minutes so I'm just going to leave this install and come back to you later when it's finished just to explain again this is installing UOS firmware version 2.10 we're now on version 2.12 so once we've done this upgrade we will check it's all okay and then we'll update it to 2.12 which is the most current firmware available as of today June the 4th 2024 okay so let me just leave that install yeah I think what's happened is it's reverted back to its default IP address so I need to reconfigure my PC to be on the same network range as the default IP of the controller so let me just sort that out okay so the default IP address of port X1 the top port is 192.168.0.101 so I know to pick an address of my PC in that range so I'm going to use that 0 .1, 0 0.55 okay that close that close all my network windows connected my cable to port X1 of the controller and the default IP address is that 192.168.0.101 so I'll go in here 192.168.0.101 now you do sometimes get this message so you can click on advanced and basically it's saying because you're using HTTPS secure websites you need a certificate and there's no certificate installed so we can go proceed okay so I'm in so I can download the license agreement and then you can read that later and then accept license agreement and this is where you define your username and your password to get into this controller so I'm going to use admin for the username which is the default but then I'm going to use my own unique password and then you have to create that to accept it because that is the username and password you'll use when you log into the controller as in now and it's also the same username and password you'll use when you're using codices to download a project or go online okay so we're now online and it says I have that part number don't worry about that too much and it says it's UOS version 2.10 and I'm connected to this port so there your port address is default X1 is what we call ETH0 in the software that's the top port and X2 is the bottom Ethernet port and has 192.168.1.101 okay so I've got UOS 2.10 but now I need to upgrade that to 2.12 so I'm bang up to date so I can go into UOS control center go to software and updates update and install so we need to update to one to the latest version 2.12 okay so hopefully you left the tab open in your browser from when we were looking on the support website 
and we did a search on firmware okay so we previously downloaded this file I did say you should download this file so hopefully you have done that if you haven't just do it now and then when you've downloaded it this is the file zip file you'll see okay so there's the zip file that it downloads and there is the extracted zip so you need to extract the zip the same as I've done and you get all of these files the release notes supported firmware etc and there's the actual firmware and notice it's not called update now as in it's not updating from you create web to codices it's purely a firmware version so you have basically got to have UOS on the controller before you can upgrade to that version we, we can't go straight from web controller to this version that's the issue so I go back to my controller and in this window here I just dragged the correct file across so I want to drag across this one put it in there and again it's 0.3 megabytes sorry 0.3 gigabytes so this may take 30 minutes as well so let me just leave that installing okay so if you notice it did say seven stages but actually it did eight of seven if that makes any sense so it's 100 percent complete doesn't seem to have had a problem and now it's rebooting the controller and if you remember I did reset the uh, IP address to default so it should just auto reload once it's finished doing its update so at this stage don't be tempted to power cycle a controller or pull cables out just let it go through the process of rebooting I would suggest we just drop out of the update now and go get rid of that go back to the standard page and there we are so the IP addresses stayed as they should have done and uh, we're now on 2.12 okay so that's that stage complete the next stage is to install the Codesys SL runtime onto the actual controller hardware this is what turns the controller into a fully functional generic Codesys controller so we need to download this from a different website unfortunately so I'll show you the process of doing that now the easiest way to get to the correct website is to actually type in the type description of the controller which is this UC20 WL2000AC remember to put the dashes in and then look for the search result that takes you to catalog.videmuller so click onto that and then you get taken to the uh, Videmuller catalog site where you have a picture of the product and some well a lot of technical data so if we look under the download section just to say there are quite a lot of useful bits of information here you've got CAD files in different formats certification application notes on setting up certain features but at this point we're interested in software so we need to install this one runtime software code is control SL package so we click on that and it will download a zip file so let me show you the zip file so the zip file it downloads is this and if you double click into it to have a look you'll see that there are lots of different packages suit lots of different types of hardware this is the one we're interested in so what you need to do is extract this folder onto your PC it may take five or ten minutes because there's a lot of different files there which are quite large so download that and then the end result will be this folder and then in this folder the only one you're really interested in is this one that file so the next stage is to install that into the controller so if you go back to our browser go to the home page of the controller and then go to the UOS control center go to apps and then you go to offline installation 
So offline installation means we're not connected to the public internet. There are lots of apps that you can install from the controller, install within the controller, but they come from an online repository. This does not. So we go offline installation, click on there, upload file, and then we point to the path where the folder, where their file is. And that's the file. Open that. And there you go, it's uploading it now. So this may take a few minutes. OK, so that appears to have completed OK. It all appears in green. So if we now go to App Manager, do a refresh. I think what we need to do is give it a few minutes for the app to install and then do a refresh. So we've lost connectivity to that product at the moment. I think it's just because it takes a few minutes to install the app. So I wouldn't panic at this stage. What I'm going to do is just shorten this address so we're just connecting straight to the home page so let's try again there you go service is starting there we go so as I said previously don't worry about this name here I've got a very old controller yours might say UC 20 WL 2000 AC doesn't matter too much as long as it works correctly so the Codasys app is quite heavy, it's quite heavy on memory resources, so um, this is why it takes a little while for it to recover. Okay, so it says something went wrong, but I'm not sure it really has, I think it's just taken a long time. So I'll do another refresh. There we are, it says Codasys Control SL. So if I click in here, and go to apps app manager there we go so codis is control sl is installed but i can tell you from experience it does take five to ten minutes to actually get the codis is control up and running you should also be aware that until you buy a codis is runtime license it will run in demo mode which gives you a maximum of two hours usage and if you're using things like OPC UA comms, you may probably find that the uh, connection will be lost after less than 30 minutes. So you do need to purchase runtime licenses for Codasys and the load license you buy, there's not just one license, it's dependent on how big your program is, the number of field bus connections, etc. So there's a few different parameters that define which license you need to purchase. As soon as we see a running i'm happy that the app is installed correctly it's fairly quick on this product because at the moment i've only got this one app installed but there are lots of other apps you can install via this method which is done online so that it goes to an app hub apps repository and lets you install other apps such as node red opc ua so the more apps you have, the more memory hungry it is, obviously. I would strongly suggest you don't install more than three or four apps because it starts to um, be a memory issue with the controller. Okay, so I'm happy that we've actually upgraded the firmware correctly and we've installed the Codasys control. So we are now ready to connect with Codasys software. That's the end of this video. I will now do a continuing video which will show you how to connect with Codasys development software. Thanks for watching, I hope that's helpful to you.